So this is the oldest section of the of the agroforestry garden. I guess it's got like all this bamboo which I planted ages ago. This needs to be thinned out. So I'm gonna take out like let's say like 75% of all these stems, they're gonna go. And I'll use them for mulch. And then we have this big white mulberry tree. Long what do you say? Pakistan white or white chatoot mulberry. So I'm gonna actually take off yeah, maybe like half of this. So I'm gonna make lots of really big cuttings from these stems here. I'm gonna take it all back. One of the good things about this is that the um, all summer long, like from early spring until late summer into autumn, this is all shady. So I grow like turmeric and I've got galangal here and other things, but it's about to drop all its leaves. And then um, I'll be able to grow like salads and stuff, like quick stuff underneath here, because this will get full sun all winter, because this is actually north south here. So I'm on the north, that's south over there. So it's sort of shaded from the west. Um, and yes, yeah, so all the light just sort of streams in here, as you can see, like up here, where there's no, no trees yet. There's actually, there's trees, but they haven't grown. So these are all planted north south as well. So the sun penetrates in uh, from the morning until, you know, then it goes overhead and eventually it's shaded. So what else we got here? We've got Narahila. The um, sort of a tomato eggplant relative with yellow fruits, um, banana, turmeric. Uh, just finished putting in some white Thai chilies here. So they basically they went fruit until sort of next early summer. But see, because of the because of the tree canopy here, unless it's like a really really savage winter, we won't get any frost under here. Because I've actually I've grown bananas here in the past. And that's when this tree was even smaller, like I'm going to cut it back to. And this protected, just the, even with no leaves, just the, just all the fine twigs, they create like a little blanket of, of warmer air, um, along with the fact that it's facing north. So then, you know, the sun comes in, warms up the soil during the winter. And at nighttime, that, that heat radiates back up and creates like a little bubble of warm, warmer air. It keeps, can keep most frosts off. So we've got more turmeric. So I've just been like pulling, doing a bit of pruning of the mulberry. Mulberry is a bit hard to work with. Uh, actually, it's not. When it's young, it's easy to work with because they grow in like long whips. When you get old growth like this, it's all like you know gnarly. So yeah, I think just this time it'll be harder to work with. Um, this is our ginger. It didn't do so well this year, but um, yeah, we got some to work. But the idea is that this whole bed here, this will all be ginger next summer. It's be our sort of perpetual bed. And then what we've done is we've put, we've got like ginger, ginger, chili. Now this is more like a, what's it called? Frigia, frigiatello, like a, it's a pepperoncini, pepperoncino type Italian capsicum. So it's a little bit spicy. I, I've actually found it in Coles. They had it mislabeled. Uh, so I pulled it out and um, I had one, one just a touch of red on it. So then I put it on the windowsill, let it let it mature, and then um, yeah. So if you get if you see chilies like green chilies in the supermarket, and they've got even just a tit, touch of red on them, if you put them on their windowsill, they've actually matured far enough that with a bit of sunlight they'll mature all the way, and then you can use the seeds out of those. So it's a good way. That's why I've gotten jalapenos, and I've gotten these um, Italian ones. And then I've, what I've done, so that's sort of a medium strata height. Um, actually, so is the ginger. But they'll sort of tend to grow a little bit different times. Um, and I'll, I'll sort of cut them back as well. Like these take longer. These are faster. These take longer to get going. Um, then I'll put onion. There's actually red shallots. And they're growing there. And we have this um, crotillaria and a bit of a climbing tomato. Comes up over this trellis. And my friend Paul sent me some uh, grass jelly vine. So this is, hasn't grown very much, but I expect, you know, being a perennial, it just takes a little while to get going. There's some tobacco bush. I didn't plant that. It just comes up by itself. So instead of pulling out weeds, I always look at weeds and I think, well, do I really have to kill it or do I just prune it? So most of the time I find that you can just keep cutting them. And it's better to have there because it's sort of pumping out the the biomass and pumping out the mulch. And unless it's like there are there are problematic weeds like things that are suckering and form bulbs and just like spread everywhere. 
especially if they're shade tolerant. But these things, they just, you know, they'll just exist as long as they need to and then they'll just sort of phase out of existence by themselves. Um, not finished planting here, but yeah, I learned from Scott. I was a bit silly at first. Like in permaculture, they say chop and drop, right? Now chop and drop's fine, but uh, Scott was basically said, said something on Facebook forums once. He said that they don't really don't really like the term chop and drop with the syntropics, and now I understand why. It's because chop and place or chop and organize, you know, it's uh, being organized like this actually makes it much easier to plant. You can just part the mulch, plant into it. Um, also, you know, I know from like growing different mushrooms and stuff that when they're bundled together in a, in a raft like this, like mushroom mycelium actually prefers that. They can easily, more easily jump from log to log. Whereas if it's all like random crisscross and everything, like it's harder for the mycelium to actually come up uh, and, to, and to move from log to log. So this actually is, is much better. And then when you get to little sticks, they're all bundled like this. Actually really good. Um, there's a citrus tree in here. There's a tomato growing up through it. Because, you know, I don't expect to see anything from the citrus tree for, you know, many years. It's a seedling. So in the meantime, it's just it's just a living trellis. And it can take as long as it needs to, you know, because I'm getting tomatoes. And then there's, well, what do we have up here? This is Acacia maidenii, maiden's wattle. This is a native. Um, it's a good wattle here. It's one of the, one of the indigenous ones to this area. Um, it does sucker. Suckers like crazy. Whenever you injure the roots, you'll get little, I'll show you later, you get little seedlings coming up. Suckers, I should say. You also get seedlings. It's all my medinii up there. So if you don't prune it, it'll just grow into a, a malt, like a suckering copse like that. But, uh, you know, I started pruning this up. So now I've got lots, I've got more light coming in here. And I'm about to, to get up there and just like basically give it a full on haircut. But what I have to do is get all this organized first. So this has to be ready to receive everything from above. Right? So I don't want to bring all this stuff down on top of a mess because then all the weeds are just going to grow through it. So what do we got here? We've got a choco vine. There's actually, there's a seedling grape that came up just there, like a bird dropped that. So that's growing, that's just growing across the ground at the moment. I'm going to, I'm going to actually run that up the tree just for fun. Uh, and then there's a choco, which I planted. So that's grown by itself. I didn't even help it at all. It's got all the way up into the trees. And that's perennial. So if it gets frosted or whatever, it'll just go die back to the root system. Come spring, it'll just, it'll reshoot like twice as fast. More than twice as fast. It takes ages to get going the first year. I don't even know if I'll get many fruits, but in the second year you get heaps. And we have dragon fruit. Again, just cuttings I found near the coast. Just pushed them up against the tree. Just push them into the mulch a bit. See, just go move it or something. And once they latch onto the tree, it'll just grow up by itself. And then once it reaches, you know, a fork or as high as it can go and starts to hang down again, that's when they start to flower and fruit. And there are flowering and fruiting dragon fruit in tabulum, so I know that'll be fine. Um, just to make things a bit faster, I'm using this. This is Erythrina. Uh, I think it's variegata, or is it indica? Anyway, it's basically considered a weed here on the north coast, but not here because I get frosty. So the only place that this can live is under the canopy of these trees. It can't live out in the open. It would be killed. So I just go along the side of the road, cut these stems, you know, stick them into the ground, let them get well established. This one's still, I had to move this one, so see it's a bit wobbly still. But those roots will spread out. And then I plant dragon fruit around the base and that will climb up. Now I don't know if this will be strong enough, so I might need to create create like a what do you say, like a tripod. So you have three of these, like a tripod, and then every time these get, you know, too long, like these these are actually just cut these. Off. See, that's mulch. Put that around the base. I haven't even planted this yet, but you know the idea is you just you just put it on top, uh, and then it'll just dry out by itself. So it won't be able to form roots if it's just sitting on top. And uh, like I was saying on this mulberry tree, it's going to drop its leaves in a few weeks. And then we have an avocado here that will enjoy sort of winter frost protection and, um, and the winter sun. And this will all open up and so we'll be able to grow winter vegetables here. 